I have been using Node MCU ASP8266 and ASP32 modules for quite a long time with different IoT platforms, including the Blink application. UV dots and ThinkSpeak. While using the Blink application, you are limited to use only one type of the module. You can select the Node MCU ASP8266 or you can select the ASP32 module from the device list. With Blink application, you can use multiple devices but of the same type. There is a video in which I explained how to use multiple Node MCU modules with the same Blink application. This video can really help you in designing advanced level projects where you need to monitor multiple devices installed at different locations. So if you plan to use the same IoT supported devices then go ahead and use Blink application. But if you plan to use different modules then you will need to switch to another IoT platform UV Dots or ThinkSpeak. Before I'm going to explain anything first a few words about the sponsor of this video. The Node MCU ASP8266 and ASP32 power supply PCB boards used in this project are sponsored by the PCBWay company. PCBWay is quite professional in the field of PCB manufacturing. You can try their services at extremely low prices, only $5 for 10 PCBs and $30 in total for 20 PCBs assembly. Besides this, the new members also get a $5 bonus. The Gerber files of the PCB boards used in this project can be downloaded from the PCBWay official website. You can find a link in the description. In this episode, you will learn how to use the Node MCU ASP8266 and ASP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module with the ThinkSpeak IoT platform. A potentiometer is connected with the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module while the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor is connected with the ESP32 module. The field run consists of the potentiometer value. By rotating the knob of the potentiometer, different values are sent to the ThinkSpeak field run where these values are displayed on the chart. Field 2 and field 3 consist of the humidity and temperature values respectively. It takes approximately 20 seconds to update the values and this is the reason I prefer UV dots over the ThinkSpeak IoT platform. Because in UV dots the values are updated after every one second. But anyhow I will continue with ThinkSpeak as I have already used the UV dots IoT platform. I will provide a link in the description if you want to learn how to use the UV Dots IoT platform. Without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. If you have never used the ESP8266 and ESP32 modules, then I highly recommend watch my previous tutorials in which I have explained how to install the ESP8266 and ESP32 boards. You can find link in the description. As you know, in this project, two circuits are used. One is based on the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, while the other one is based on the ESP32 Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth module. So first let's start with the circuit diagram of the Node MCU ASP8266 Wi-Fi module. Let's first of all start with the 5 volt regulated power supply which is used to power up the Node MCU ASP8266 Wi-Fi module. This power supply is based on the famous LM7805 linear voltage regulator. J1 is the female power jig and this is where we connect a 12 volt adopter, battery or a solar panel. Two 470 microfarad 
decoupling capacitors are connected at the input and output sides of the voltage regulator. A 330 ohm resistor is connected in series with a 2.5 volt LED. This is a current limiting resistor. The output of the voltage regulator is connected with the VN pin of the node MCU ASP8266 5M module and the ground is connected with the ground. SV1 to SV7 are the female headers. The middle leg of the potentiometer of variable resistor is connected with the airlock pin is zero of the node MCU ASP8266 5M module while the other two legs are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the node MCU module. The push button is not used in this project. The 5 volt regulated power supply remain the same. The DHT11 temperature and humidity module VDD pin is connected with the ESP32 module 3.3 volt pin. The data pin of the DHT11 sensor is connected with the GPIO15. Pin 3 of the DHT11 sensor is not connected while the last pin of the DHT11 sensor is connected with the ground. These PCBs are manufactured by the PCBA company. As you can see the quality is really great. The silk screen is quite clear and the Blake solder mask looks amazing. The PCB designing and soldering I have already explained in my previous video tutorials. You can find links in the description. While your ThinkSpeak account is open, click on the new channel button. Enter your channel name. Write some description if you want, this is optional. I will need three fields, one for the potentiometer and the other two for the humidity and temperature. Scroll down and click on the Save Channel button. As you can see, three charts are added. Now the next step is to click on the API keys. Copy the right API key and paste it in the Node MCO ESP8266 and ESP32 programs. Next copy the channel ID and paste it in the two programs. No matter how many RT supported devices you add, you will need to use the same right API key and the same channel ID. Our channel is created and now ready for the use. Now let's have a look at the programs. In this project two programs are used. One program is written for the node MCU ESP8266 while the other program is written for the ESP32 module. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure you download all the necessary libraries from my website electronicclinic.com. I have tried my best to keep the coding simple. Both the programs are exactly the same. The only difference is in the ESP32 programming, I added a library for the DHT11 sensor and defined some variables for the temperature and humidity values. The most important thing that you need to take care of is never use the same fields. As you can see in the Node MCU programming, I have used the field 1 for the potentiometer and in the ESP32 programming I used field 2 and field 3 for the humidity and temperature values. So that's all about the programming. Now the final step is to upload the programs.
circuit diagrams, programs and libraries can be downloaded from our website electronicclinic.com. You can find a link in the description. As you can see the programs are uploaded. Now let's watch this project in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.